Ming Laba and welcome to Myanmar Today. I am Henry Zin with the latest news and reports from around Myanmar. Agajo brings us the first report on a plan that's underway for kiosks to be installed at busy bus stops. David Tanner with the report on art exhibition by award-winning Korean artist. Thora Suizin has the story on activity of the History Department for Centenary of Yangon University. Last but not least, a report on the 4th Myanmar Lepwe World Championship. Before we get to the reports, we've got some local news. Aiming to encourage responsible investment in Myanmar through cooperation among the business communities and governments of Myanmar, Japan and the United States, Myanmar Japan US Forum on Fostering Responsible Investment was held in Yangon on Tuesday. State Councillor Don San Suu Kyi addressed the forum, saying that guided by new Myanmar Sustainable Development Plan, trade policy is revised to be in line with regional and global commitments and more favourable and also to attract investors to create new opportunities and sustainable growth. She also added that Myanmar welcomes investors with the vision outlined in Myanmar Sustainable Development Plan. At the forum, two panel discussions on major challenges to encourage private investment and possible cooperation among Myanmar, Japan and US for a better future, and roles of domestic or foreign investors and ma major challenges faced in Myanmar market to promote further investment took place as well. The National Disaster Management Committee issued updated report on the situation of floods and landslides in Myanmar as of August 16th, according to the Department of Disaster Management. The report said that the massive floods and landslides triggered by heavy rainfalls have occurred in 12 out of 14 states and regions and one union territory since 15th of June this year. Due to massive floods and landslides, approximately a total of 0.2 million people were affected while 201,133 people from 43,759 households were evacuated to 400 evacuation sites in affected areas. The total death tolls were 82 and 49 were injured. Out of 12 flood-affected states and regions, Moon State was the most devastated with 73 deaths, 48 injured, and 42,354 people from 9,927 households were evacuated to 136 evacuation sites. Significantly, the massive landslide at the Malet Mountain in Pound Township was the worst in Moon State as it caused 69 deaths and 47 injured. As of August 16th, Department of Disaster Management under the Ministry of Social Welfare Relief and Resettlement provided the relief items and humanitarian assistance amounted to about 404.6 million jats for the disaster-affected people in regions and states and received an approximate amount of 105.7 million jats donated for the survivors of current flood and landslides. A ceremony to launch a project on digital literacy for the online safety and resilience was held in Nebidor on Monday. The project is a part of Safety School Project and aimed for safety in collecting information and for reduction of disparity to benefit online users. The Ministry of Education jointly initiated the project together with the Telenor Myanmar and the Plan International Myanmar. At the event, Union Minister for Education Dr. Myo Thingji said that many students and people have widely used internet and social media and that the trend is calling for teaching internet literacy at the basic education schools to help Myanmar students keep abreast with their international counterparts in various sectors. The project will be implemented by the Department of Basic Education with a view on future socio-economic development of the country through education sector. And that's all with the local news. Let's take a look at the first report now. Yangon City Mayor Uma Monso told reporters during Monday regular meeting with media at the City Hall that kiosks will be installed at crowded bus stops in Yangon. It's noted that YCDC will take responsibility in building the kiosks and will rent it to the interested people. Akajo has the details. 
YCDC on Monday told media that about 10 feet tall kiosks will be placed in crowded bus stops in Yangon where many commuters travel. Yangon City's Mayor Uma Monso told the plan to reporters at YCDC's regular meeting with media at the City Hall. The mayor explained that the cigarette and beetle quid will not be allowed in kiosks to sell. <laughs> We will not allow the selling of cigarette and beetle quite at the kiosks. Currently, we have planned to give priority to three groups, and other people can also apply for it. We will let the civil society organizations, the three groups we have prioritized are Red Cross, Scouts, volunteer organizations, and persons with disabilities. This is like a beetle quit shop, but they won't sell beetle quit, but it will be in more systematic and neat facility, so they can sell things like top-up cards and whatever. No beetle quit and cigarette. We will also set up a phone charging facility at the kiosk. It is noted that YCDC will take responsibility to build those kiosks and will rent it to the interested people. The building cost of a kiosk will cost over 2 million jets and the rental fees is not set yet but will be informed to public right after necessary discussions. Domi Mitwe, YCDC member said. Not just three groups we mentioned as priority. We will let any interested people to invest in the kiosks. One kiosk costs more than two million chats. We don't have any limitation for the number yet. Also, in coming three or four months, we will be running card payment system on YBS network. So people can buy the top-up cards for bus fares and snacks. We will invite the interested people, discuss and decide the rental fee for the kiosks. <laughs> There are about 1,800 bus stops in Yangon, and the kiosks will be placed at the busier bus stops where most passengers commute. The sample kiosks are showcased at the bus stop on Bay Road near the Yangon Region Government Office. YCDC and FMI Deco signed MOU to install 500 smart bus stops featuring facilities, advertising displays, and time information. About 200 were installed so far. YRTA said the locations of bus stops need to be changed under the MOU and designate new bus stops at commuters' requests. This is Agajo reporting for Myanmar International Radio. That's a report on the plan that's underway for kiosks to be installed at busy bus stops. We're going to take a look at the weather conditions now in Myanmar. In Yangon, it's going to be cloudy, showers and thunderstorms around during the day. There'll be overcast, a shower or a thunderstorm in the area at night. The daily outlook is around 30 degrees Celsius high, but it's going to feel like 36 degrees Celsius. There's a 69% chance of rain for the day. In Nebidor, it's going to be cloudy, a thunderstorm in spots in the morning, then occasional rain and thunderstorms during the day. However, there'll be an overcast, occasional rain and probably a thunderstorm at night. The daily outlook is around 30 degrees Celsius high, but it's going to feel like 35 degrees Celsius. 55% chance of rain for the day. Looking ahead, showers and thunderstorms around Thursday afternoon through late Saturday night. 
In Mandalay, it's going to be cloudy, probably with a thunderstorm. However, they'll be overcast with probably a thunderstorm at night. The daily outlook is around 32 degrees Celsius high, but it's going to feel like 39 degrees Celsius. 53% chance of rain for the day. Looking ahead, rain and thunderstorms late Sunday night. Stay with us as David Tanner brings us the second report and we'll take a look at the stocks and currency exchange rates right after that. To share and connect the cultures and traditions, as well as other different and vibrant, vibrant culture of the two countries, Myanmar and Korea, the art exhibition, which consists of professional award-winning artists from Korea, was held at the Yangon Gallery from 14th of August to the 17th. David Turner shares more information with us. Korean arts include traditions in calligraphy, music, painting and pottery, often marked by the use of natural forms, surface decoration and bold colors or sounds. With that being said, let's hear out from one of the professional Korean artists from the exhibition to explain about the exhibition. I'm an oil painting artist and I draw mainly the landscape. So. I am very happy to draw the paintings, so I want uh, people uh, to feel the same feelings, the same happiness. So <laughs> this is the second time in Yangon Gallery, but uh, Myanmar artist and uh, Korean artist uh, communicate and visit, and uh, we will uh, show the different. Uh, paintings so um, and uh, you want to know the Myanmar people and the Myanmar uh, customs so uh, the Myanmar artists want to uh, the Korean people want to know Korean people and the Korean uh, manners or uh, other things how is this kind of exhibition so important as well for both of our country, Myanmar and Korea? So uh, we, we don't know the Myanmar, uh, Myanmar and the Myanmar people, but we, when we uh, exhibit the, this, uh, uh, the, 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 these words, so we know the uh, people and the country uh, familiarly. Yeah. Myanmar people came here, uh, come here to see our Korean uh, customs or Korean paintings. So they feel the difference. So I think the Korean painting is a little uh, uh, modern. So uh, they feel the uh, progress of the paintings. So. She also explained about her painting and some of other paintings in the exhibition as well. Let's find out. Yeah, my painting is mainly about the simplification. Oh, I draw the image so people feel the, uh, the things. But other artists uh, draw the uh, abstract. <laughs> yeah, abstract. And, uh, mm, they draw the uh, acrylic, so yeah, so uh, uh, Myanmar uh, artist uh, uh, draw the uh, concrete, concretely, or uh, the landscape or other things, but Korean people uh, likes to the abstract, yeah, it is uh, different, yeah. I have also interviewed one of the Myanmar artists for his perspective in this exhibition and how he think of Korean art style. Well, when I come into the exhibition, I just realized that most of the Korean artists like to draw abstract more than landscape and etc. And if you see here beside me, you can see some vibrant and cute colors landscape with abstract-ish. So it looks really artistic and fine and cool for me. As our traditions differ, there are lots of differences in even our modern art senses. Korea likes abstract in mostly every painting. As we can see here, 
as they put a little bit of their mindset in each of their paintings. Modern abstracts, while drawing and painting,、uh, can be a bit free, and most of it doesn't need to be in the border and rules. It mostly depends on the feeling of the artist. Lastly, I want to say people to come visit and experience the art style that is not really familiar with us, and we can learn or just enjoy and feel the way the other culture thinks. Reporter David Tanner reporting from Myanmar International Radio, signing out for now. That's a report on the art exhibition by award-winning Korean artist. Let's take a look at the currency rates from Myanmar Central Bank. One U.S. dollar is at one thousand five hundred and twenty-three juts. One Chinese RMB is at two hundred and fifteen juts. One Euro is at one thousand six hundred and eighty-seven juts. One pound sterling is at one thousand eight hundred and forty-three juts. One Singapore dollar is at one thousand and ninety-nine juts. One Malaysian ringgit is at three hundred and sixty-four juts. One Thai baht is at forty-nine juts, and the Indian rupee is at twenty-one juts. Gold is trading at one thousand five hundred and four dollars. Silver is at seventeen dollars, and Brent crude oil is at fifty-six dollars. On the Yangon Stock Exchange, FMI remains at twelve thousand. MTSH also remains at four thousand one hundred. MCB remains at eight thousand four hundred. FPB also remains at twenty-six thousand. TMH remains at three thousand and fifty. You're watching MI Radio's Myanmar today. You can go to our website at miradio.com.mm and listen to our radio programs live on the website. If you're on FM, catch us on ninety-six point one FM in Yangon, ninety-six point five in Mandalay, and ninety-six point seven in Nibido. Or you can simply download MI Radio app on both iOS and Android devices, so you can listen to our radio programs wherever you are. All right, let's move on to the next report. The history department is to conduct an activity of organizing a photo exhibition for the centenary celebration of Yangon University. It will collaborate with Open History Project to bring the exhibition of reflecting the old days around 1920s when Yangon University was founded. Thought as within has the story. For the centenary celebration of Yangon University, which is to fall in December of 2020, the whole university is preparing, and respective governments and teams are also holding the pre-celebrations. Yangon University was established in 1920, and it has been playing an important role in the education sector of the country. Regarding to the hundredth anniversary of Yangon University, which has the great history. History Department is to collaborate with Open History Project to hold an exhibition of commemorating the past days of Yangon University. Open History Project is the project of displaying the historical and artistic community-based references. Centenary is the rare year that you can celebrate. So our history department wants to participate by doing something memorable and special. Last month, I met Ko Ang So Min, who is the founder of Open History Project, and we discussed the idea of a celebration. What our department wants is that we want to hold a photo exhibition reflecting the old days because photos can tell us the changes of our community through different periods of time. We have some photos concerning our school activities, such as photos of history team around 1948, the photos of rectors of all times, as well as other personal photos that the teachers who are still living contributed to us. Wang Soumi, founder of Open History Project, talked about the idea of the exhibition. The Taiwan says that when Jim Ma said that the main part of the PIA the Pongdani Nibuni and the Alon Piao the Kudin that came to Piao was a good Taiwan. We are planning to exhibit the historical events and images of around 1920s, 
We also have the photos of Yangon University, but we want to focus on the situation of an era. When Yangon University was founded, we have an idea of decorating the setting of the exhibition to reflect that era. We will make for the observers to feel like going back to 1920s. As soon as you enter the exhibition hall, we are trying to include all the context of 1920s era as much as possible. History Department aims to hold the exhibition in November 2019 at Recreation Center of Yangon University. They are also doing preparedness to open the exhibition for one or two weeks. We have discussed about our ideas and are still working to collect the photos and book references. We are also preparing the data to conduct the mini workshop or mini seminar along with the photo exhibition. Now the information is being distributed among the present students as well as the alumni. We requested the responsible persons of the university for the permission of the place and time for exhibition and are still waiting for the approval. The photo exhibition of history department is expected to be the nostalgia of the past days of the university as well as the community around 1920s. Year after year, under the guidance of the government, the missions for the improvement of Yale University are being carried out. Infrastructures are renewed as well as the curriculum is refreshed according to the current education. By signing MOUs and collaborating with international organizations, Yale University is still playing an important role in the education setup of current Myanmar. That's all for now. This is Dora Susan from MI Radio. That's a report on the activity of the History Department for Centenary of Yangon University. Well, finally, we got our last report on the 4th Myanmar Lekwei World Championship. The 4th Myanmar Lekwei World Championship was held on Sunday at Thaimpu Lekwei Stadium in Yangon. Myanmar Traditional Boxing Federation jointly organized the event with Myanmar Martial Arts Group. There were altogether seven bouts, including a four-round fight for a new generation as well as one female fight. The highlight of the whole event was the match between Myanmar champion Tun Tun Min and Russian Muay Thai champion Mikhail Vatrila. Ye Nai has the story. The fourth Myanmar Lightweight World Championship was held on 18 of August 2019 at Thaimpu Lightweight Stadium in Yangon. Almost all the fights ended in draws, except Myanmar Lawai star Tun Tun Min, beat the competitor by referee's decision of ending the fight. Myanmar Traditional Boxing Federation jointly organized this event with Myanmar Martial Arts Group. There were altogether seven bouts, including a four-round fight for new generation as well as a one female fight. The competition drew hundreds of fans coming to see the highly anticipated lightweight stars like Tun Tun Min, Ye Dui Ni and Dudu. Uwana, managing director of Myanmar Martial Arts Group, also explained lightweight rules and regulation. Here is what he said. According to traditional rules, the fight can only be won by knockout. Otherwise, the fighter will lose in a so-called medical checkup failure by the ring doctor. With knockout system, it's very difficult to win champion belt. In previous three fights, although the combats were so fierce with loss of injuries, all ended with draws. For that kind of fights, the two fighters share champion title, jointly winning a gold medal. Nobody is eligible to receive champion belt or winner flag. The trophy is only dedicated for decisive victory, here also called knockout. The four round fight for new generation came first of all, where Nguyen Nando fought against 9 1. 
in special five round bout three time world lightweight champion Ye Dwayne battle against Iranian fighter Babak. Ye Dwayne suffered a huge cut in his forehead from Babak's elbow strike in the first round, which led to lose his offensive position, ending up in a draw. The other five round matches included 2019 Golden Belt Championship Yan Nineteen vs South Pacific Kickboxing Champion from New Zealand Ken Collin, 2019 Belt Championship Biaka vs Traditional Lightweight Gold Medalist Hikashi from Japan, and Memor's First Class Lightweight Practitioner Tutu vs Brazilian Muay Thai Champion Fabio Ferrari. Despite all the fights were so brutal and fierce, they ended in draw. First class lightweight practitioner Tutu also shared us his feeling on failures for victory. The lightweight world champion is going to know. To know be that you do, remember you are paid that way to know. For me, I have pledged to present my fans with the golden belt for Myanmar Lawi World Championship. Although I tried my best, I cannot fulfill my determination. So give me another chance for the next time. Today, I'm not satisfied with my technique and approaches. And so accept my deep apology for the inconveniences. 2019 Gold Belt Championship Biaka also apologized to his fan. Although I tried to beat in this fight, I know I have weak points. Anyway, I did the best for victory. From here, I do apologize to my beloved fans for not being able to bring the victory for them. But please do support me. The highlight of the whole tournament was the match between Myanmar champion Tun Tun Min and Russian Muay Thai champion Mikhail Vetrila. The fight was so fierce. For the fans, the breathtaking moment came when Mikhail Vetrila was showing his best skills in defending Tun Tun Min's offensive advances. Also for Tun Tun Min, he has gone through a tough fight for the final victory. The fight continued until the last round, but during the second round, Mikhail Vetrila couldn't withstand Tun Tun Min's nice punches and collapsed down to the floor. So as usual, the referee started to count. The fight was terminated in the final round after Mikhail was counted four times in a total. That was how Tun Tun Min beat his competitor. Finally, the most awaited female call challenge came out. It was four round match where Myanmar female champion Voronika did the best to beat her rival So Sing So So Pit, Thailand Muay Thai champion. But finally, their match finished in a draw. That's all the reports we have for today. There have been protests in Hong Kong and many are not happy with what's going on right now. We have the video footage of what's happening in Hong Kong. Qu'est l'émeute de casseurs, ce qui n'est pas la manifestation de citoyens libres. In other news, protests at the base of the dormant volcano Mauna Kea Mountain on the big island of Hawaii have entered their sixth week. Jason Momoa, Dwayne The Rock Johnson and Nicole Schzinger have joined campaigners protesting against the building of a giant telescope on top of a mountain that some Hawaiians consider sacred.
Johnson, who voices Maui in the animated film Moana, lived in Hawaii as a child. Aquaman star Momoa and singer Shazinger were born there. Protesters have been blocking access to Mauna Kea's summit since mid-July to prevent the building of the observatory, called the 30-meter telescope, TNT in short. Other famous faces, including Ezra Miller, who plays superhero The Flash, and Damian Marley, son of the reggae singer Bob Marley, have joined protesters at the site. And that's a wrap on Myanmar Today. Catch the show on MITV every evening, Monday to Friday at 8.30. You can also join me on MI Radio from 7.30am to 8am, 1 to 1.30pm and from 7.30 to 8 in the evening. Don't forget to drop your comments and messages on our Facebook post. We'll be back with more news and reports. Thank you for joining us. I am Henry Zin. Have a great day, everyone. <laughs>